أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول للعمر منكم and always a reminder to myself on Abdul Qalaji Sudaif or miskin or zalim or jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence Alhamdulillah this weekend we'll have it as a, a recap for the last three four weeks covering all these different subjects and to see what people are, are understanding and give everybody the ability to absorb and ask the questions that they want a, a deeper understanding from the subjects that we've talked about inshaAllah instead of just keep throwing different things every day and not knowing if people are following along on this uh, journey towards the Divinely Presence inshaAllah. That Allah address us from this immense love and immense blessings towards Divinely Presence and the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad the realities of light and energy, sound and how to reach to those lights and to those realities inshaAllah. Do we have any questions inshaAllah? As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Mulana Shaykh Nurjan. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Is it possible to be from two different worlds or galaxies, inshaAllah? <laughs> I don't think we covered the subject of being from two different worlds and galaxies, so let's spend this time to, to go over the things that we have covered and that if there's a greater understanding, a reflection that people understand all these different subjects every different uh, month in Tajalli. So it's more of a recap over what we've talked about and the realities that we have talked about as far as energy, meditation, tafakkur and moving towards the, the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Alaikum Sayyidi on the, on the topic of uh, Surah Yaseen, can you please enlighten us on the secrets of the last two ayahs? Have we gone over those? Read them for me Shaykh. Ayy Shazad read it. As Salaamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That glory be to the hands that hold the mulk, kulli shay and that uh, all power it contains. So we have talked about that towards the understanding that the Ayat al Kareem and the holy surah of Surah Yaseen, it uh, is the heart of Prophet the heart of Qur'an and the reality that directs us towards the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And Allah ending the holy surah and describing that, glory be to the hand that has this mulk and that it kulli shay, that it encompasses all power. And to that hand and to that reality you will return. So that's the… This is the, the power ocean that emanating from the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad 
that La ilaha illallah, it is clear for us that there's nothing there but Allah So me and you we're not returning to La ilaha illallah by virtue of the statement is very clear. There's nothing in that reality but Allah no partner, no likeness, nothing. And that Allah is directing the people of Marifa means the people of Gnosticism and those whom took their tariqah to reach towards a reality, they left the circumference. And they're asking that we don't want the life of being on the circumference and superficial, we want to understand ourselves. And then that journey begins inward not outward. As a result of moving inward they take that radius into the center. Every step that they're moving into that reality, that's the way of marifa. Is that path of inner reality and inner knowledge. So the one whom doesn't tafakkur, doesn't meditate, doesn't contemplate, they can never reach to marifa. So they did not start their journey inward. As a result of what they understand is always going to be external and superficial. And inward kulli shay, inward encompasses all power, all realities, external encompasses only of the material world. So that's limited. So what Allah describes of the material world is that uh, it's perishing and it's not even comparable to the truth. Because when the truth comes to that which is perishable, which is the material world, everything in the material world is perishing, is dying, is falling apart, it never… it doesn't stand with eternity to be eternally there. Every tree perishes, every cell, every organism, every creation on this abode is perishing. And Allah is describing for us, Qul al haq that tell them that when the truth comes the falsehood perishes and that falsehood by its nature zahukan crumbles. So the whole of material world is false. So that which people only look to the outside and they, they consider their religion and their path only the external world Allah is giving for us zahukan, it's crumbling. Means your understanding of your religion, your faith, your practice, whatever it is, is crumbling because it's all based on the form and the external world which by its nature disappears. That's why everything dies, everything tastes of death. But the one who moves towards the truth and to the light and marifa and realities, then they're moving to that which is eternal. So the light is eternal, the, ter- the light has by its science no time. So it's not bound by time, it's not bound by death, it's not bound by vanishing. So that which is eternal from the light, the sound and the realities of energy is all from the formula of eternity. Anyone who wants their internal journey then they seek the way of eternity. And anything that they learn in this world of eternity stays with them for all of eternity. What you learn of the world of form perishes with the form. So if all you learned was how to wash your body, what will you do with that knowledge when you're dead? So forget everything, just for an example, you learned, okay wudu and how to wash the body. You die the next day and that's the only knowledge you you attained. You can't use that in your akhirah. That was to the limit of your physical world. So you say, okay I learned how to wash my body, when now you're dead you have no body, what do you do now? So it means external knowledge has a limit for the benefit of your being but it's definitely not your eternity. And that knowledge is perishable. 
it doesn't stand in the face of truth, right? So we've given examples of complete falsehood and truth but at this level they're describing even the these knowledges of Islam, the external and only external understanding doesn't stand in the face of haqqaiqs and realities, that is perishing. So then all they understood is from the outside. What awliyaullah are dispatched onto this earth and Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyya when you put it in a, your AI it tells you it's based on a practice of meditation. Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyya is known and renowned for their understandings of tafakkur and muraqaba. But in last days that becomes something strange where you ask Naqshbandi Shaykh how about muraqaba so we don't do that. But Naqshbandiyya is made for that, was known for that, is famous for that. It's the way of the internal, it's the way of understanding light, energy and sound. Because they reached to the heart of Prophet and they took that Subhan, they took that hand in the oceans of reality or kulli shay in which it encompasses all of what Allah wanted to grant to that light of Prophet and then to that light you will return. So the one whom moves towards the inner reality they start their marifah. Every step that they're going is the way of haqiqah, the haqqaiqs and truth, right? The haqq. The one whom is moving deeper into the haqq is not like anything from the one who only knows the external. What are you going to do with only knowing the, the salah when you're dead? And they physically argue about their qibla. What happens with that qibla when you're dead? Huh? Nothing. They, what you're going to benefit from that? That's why then if you accompany awliyaullah they teach you that, no that qibla has many realities. You have an external qibla and you have an internal qibla which the external is the house and the Kaaba and as they moved deeper they understood that the internal Kaaba is the direction of Sayyidina Muhammad and the deeper reality is within the soul and the heart of Prophet Those are eternal, means when they understood that the reality of Prophet is the direction towards the Divinely Presence. That I'm not on heaven, I'm not on earth, I'm in the heart of my believer means they're moving towards the realities of Allah So I mean everything then is based on this energy, the meditation, the tafakkur and the contemplation. So that's why then this style of teaching, this shaykh's teaching, this curriculum of this shaykh's teaching is very specific to Naqshbandi realities. And that doesn't mean other Naqshbandis are even teaching this because they… some of them are against meditation for some external reason we don't understand. But this is an honour that Allah has given to us and alhamdulillah those whom are fortunate enough to come across it and to move into it then they become unique amongst this creation. And that knowledge of energy and the knowledge of realities is essential for the ascension, for reaching towards these lights, reaching towards these perfections, reaching towards these realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, can you please elaborate a little bit more about what holding all the radius in one, one's hand means as you spoke last night? Yeah, it has to do with ulum al awwalin wa akhirin. When the knowledges of, of, of 
of beginning and the knowledges of all ending. It's a, an expression of an all-encompassing reality. So the center point is like holding all the strings of a balloon that every radius is connected to the center. So anyone whom connects into the center has access to all the radiuses and all the directions of knowledge. So that's very clear just if you visualize it, draw on a piece of paper. The people of circumference, what do they know about? Where they are, maybe they can see a little bit of the Rasul and a, a far away understanding of the dot, the center because they're all the way on the circumference. There's no way you can tell me the person on the circumference knows anything about the Rasul because he didn't step there and he's guessing about the dot because he's stuck on the circumference. So you draw a picture, he's on the circumference, he didn't step on the radius so he doesn't know anything about Rasulullah other than what he memorized on hadith and the rest he guessed and has absolutely no understanding of the dot of the heavenly kingdom. That's why when they speak it's as if they're trying to give verbatim from the hadith without understanding the hikmah and the wisdom of the hadith. They stop talking about heavens but they've never seen it. They talk about angels, they've never seen the light. They talk about these things not from knowledge but from reading hadith of Prophet and deducing their own understanding which completely is is imaginal world. So you've never been in a, an experiment, you've never been in a science class, you never actually conducted a, a scientific experience and only from an article you're going to explain it. What really happened when you, when you did this? So I don't know, I just read this article to you, that's it. So it's not by taste, it's not by experience. So then the one on the circumference, you understand their knowledge. When you talk they don't know what they're talking about jinn, they don't know what they're talking about angels, they don't know what they're talking about light. But they are repeating hadith but not understanding the hikmah and the wisdom of it and its practical use and how it opened. But the one then steps that Allah guide them to ascension. They took a shaykh, they took a hand, they stepped now onto the radius. That's all this talk of Rasulullah That's why you are continuously bombarded with the talks and the realities of Muhammadun Rasulullah because you're stepping on that radius. You are supposed to know everything about that reality and that's only towards the understanding. That's no way to encompass the knowledge of the Prophet But at least the turuq and the, and the students of the shaykh, they're all on that radius, all stepping on that reality. All they see around them is this love and ishq and the realities of Muhammadun Rasulullah which is the strongest, most powerful radius and really owns all the radiuses to the center. So it's the highest station to reach towards the center. And as a result, as they move step by step is what we call marifa and Gnosticism. So then now say you're in the middle. The knowledge you have of circumference, well that's all encompassing because you look back and you can see entire realities of the physical world. The knowledge you have of Rasulullah is you've been journeying on this radius and all these haqqaiqs of Muhammadan haqqaiqs and now you have even a closer version and a closer vision of the heavenly kingdom. So along those steps you've been having experiences. Now imagine then the shaykhs who are in seclusions in which they traverse that reality and entered into the center. That's the purpose of the seclusion because they begin to experience these states of death. Because certain parts of that journey require you to die and experience the state of death 
what will happen to you in that death, how to be cleansed from that death, right? So you come in grey but you'll end up in the center white because <coughs> you will battle your demons on that path. And the battle with the demons never ends and the one whom arrives into the center then there becomes infinite layers into the center because every journey expands itself even greater. Right? So like when you look at a dot, you turn the electron microscope, what happens? The dot infinitely expands because the knowledge of Allah is limitless and timeless. Right Jawad? As much as you go, it expands. And I see you guys, right? Yeah. As much as you enter, it expands. So nobody ever reaches, ah, oh, I got it all. There's no all. As much as they step, Allah expands their journey. And now they have infinitely more to go in the center. So it means that the, the capacity for Divine knowledge is limitless, timeless and infinite. Because Allah's oceans of reality have no beginning and no end. But the one in the center, now look at their horizon. They look back, they have immense knowledges of Rasulullah and immense knowledges of everything on the circumference. And from any of these Rasulullah they look and they have knowledge of the different Prophets of Allah and the realities of their nations. And everything transpires within that center. That center is then the core and the fountainhead of all knowledges, all realities, all haqqaiqs. It's coming fresh. And that's why our life was to reach towards the fresh water, not the old pages that had been written thousands of years ago, but to reach to the fresh knowledges that are continuously flowing from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad is the kawthar in which they can take from a spoon, a cup or oceans filled based on how many people they can bring into that reality. So they want to bring as many people to the presence of Prophet to drink from that fountain so that they can take oceans full. Otherwise if Allah didn't want that they would have sat by themselves in their room, no posting, no articles, no books. And they would have sat, meditated and gone deep into that reality. But at that time then they would take a spoon because that's all they need to nourish themselves. But when Allah destines them that, no, you are be destined to bring people back to this reality. And as a result the more they can gather, the more from Prophet they can receive. That's why they post the pictures, post the images, post the articles, post the, the videos. Is to get people, come on board, let's go deeper into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad so that we can receive from that bounty and immensely, immense grace of Allah And perhaps they may take to the extent of their sins the bounty of Prophet and what we recite in Burda Sharif, that to the extent of the sins of the people Prophet will grant from that presence, from that ocean and from that rahmah. That's why they're not going around looking for you know people who levitate and are, are, are righteous, they're looking for whoever has in their heart to come, come. Because they know that nobody's like that. They, there are people who believe themselves to be righteous but they don't want to deal with that. They want people who know themselves to be sinners, know themselves to be weak 
get on this caravan of love and let's go. And that we're entering into the source of that reality and perchance by the extent of the sins we should receive the bounty of intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's what Allah is, don't despair from my mercy and from my grace. It's a great sin Prophet described, why? Because he's the intercessor. So he's saying it's a great sin to think that you won't be forgiven. That's telling his nation that, I'm the one who's going to intercede for you from what Allah has given to me. How can you, how can you have despair from Allah's rahmah and mercy when Allah has connected you to rahmatan lil alameen? So that's the immensity of why the turuqs are advertising to get bus loads, train loads of people, come, come and enter into our journey. This journey of Self-realization inshaAllah. If you think in Urdu then write in Urdu, if you think in English write in English. But if you don't take notes you look back in a year or two years when there's no broadcast or something happens and you don't remember anything. You just remember I sat there and I ate food but I absorbed myself nothing. I don't know anything, I don't know how to even convey it and that's its, its own shame. But when you take notes and you're student of the way means that you understood and as you wrote those writings affected your reality so that you became a scribe for the one whom you love Sayyidina Muhammad for these are the haqqaiqs and the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah So they have an immense reality inshaAllah. SubhanAllah Sayyidi, a few people asked about the nukt. Uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi. Wa alaykum salaam wa rahmatullah. That's when Haji Shahid was singing about the nukt, nukt, nukt. <laughs> See he's inspired so he already knew that people were, were thinking of the nukt inshaAllah. Uh, Sayyidi, please could you expand a little more on the power of tafakkur when we just reflect on the one letter of Holy Qur'an, example the nukt. <coughs> the the power of tafakkur is one that you acknowledge yourself nothing and that, Ya Rabbi led me to be a nuh, that I want to be nothing. I want to be a series of nuh like a dust <clears throat> and when you master the concept of your tafakkur that you're nothing in the presence of the shaykh and that the shaykh's light to reflect to you. And like the satellites a reflection is reflecting and reflecting and reflecting to you, then you acknowledge yourself, Laila anta subhanika inni kuntu minal dalimeen. Glory be to Allah and for verily I'm an oppressor to myself. If you can carry that understanding that I'm nothing and that the, the to be a nuh is to lose the self-importance. Then we understand that the reality of the nukht is the reality of when La ilaha illallah approaches Muhammadun Rasulullah When Allah wants to bring creation into existence it's going to be by Allah's might and majesty. But manifesting from where? No, Bahrul Muhit. So imagine without this, Allah wants to bring creation and phew, creation comes into existence. Where did it go? It created its own orbit, it manifested where, and just keep coming. And every moment there's creation coming into existence. It doesn't work like that. It has to be in the 
in the ocean of tawheed and oneness. So, La ilaha illallah, one river, Muhammadun Rasulullah is another river. And this is the Qawb Qawsayni o Adana in which is two bow length or near. So we described before when La ilaha illallah it approaches this creation of Muhammadun Rasulullah What happens when an energy force approaches another energy force? It doesn't touch, it doesn't need to touch because of the adab o adana, qawb qawsayni mean two bow lengths o adana means or nearer. So there doesn't have to be a, a touch in which to become one with Allah So the adab is never to be the one but it comes close enough that the conveyance of a qudra begins to manifest. So Allah's might and majesty begins to make a manifestation from Muhammadun Rasulullah and that is the nuqt. As soon as that nuqt appears a new creation has come into existence and that comes into existence in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah Otherwise it would be all over the place and that wouldn't be tawheed because then that would be La ilaha illallah and then that creation, La ilaha illallah and another creation. But everything exists within La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah so at every moment these nuqts are coming into existence and at every moment they come into existence like an explosion within the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah entire universes. So infinitely expanding Allah infinitely bringing these creations into existence inside Muhammadun Rasulullah So then we can understand now the immense, immense reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah and everything within that light and Allah is the power and this is the Khalifa and that everything exists within that light and that that king, that reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah is the Malik and Sultan over these creations, these universes and these galaxies. And they've all been under the dominion of Muhammadun Rasulullah that he is the king for all creation and Allah is the power and authority of his heart. He controls the heart of the king and doesn't need to control the kingdom, he controls the king who controls the kingdom. So that has immense, immense power. So that, that has the immense, when we understood that then the journey towards the Lord of power is all within Sayyidina Muhammad As much as they can become a nuqt, lose themselves, lose their identity, lose any, any direction of themselves so that not to put in importance upon themselves before they reached. That's when we talked about wave and particle. The more you identify yourself the more you're a particle. The more the people identify you the more you're a particle. So you're just a seed, talking seed. And that's what then they want to realize and what Allah is showing us is that you, you're like a seed and you want to reach to your nuqt, to your reality, you have to bury it, isolate yourself. Cut yourself from people, put yourself within that hole, nobody has to know who you are, be nothing, be nothing, be nothing. Try your best to not to agitate, not to aggravate. As a result of in your ocean of nothingness the soil will begin to dissolve you and the goodness of the soil is going to produce an amazing new reality. And the best of soil, the best of that reality to plant yourself in is Muhammadun Rasulullah Right? So instead of 
putting yourself in the fana of this and that and, and to be annihilated in this and that, Allah is bringing for us, no be annihilated in the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah And as a result they became nothing, they became nothing and then a tree began to sprout, a flower began to sprout which we call the Warath al-Muhammadiyya or Gul al-Muhammadiyya or the roses because they're from the garden of Sayyidina Muhammad So they are the, the kings of fragrance, the kings of reality, those whom buried themselves in the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah they became these roses from the garden of Muhammadun Rasulullah And that's why Allah from one of the understandings, Fikum, the Prophet is amongst you. Those roses whom they annihilated in his reality they're amongst you. If you love them, treat them with respect and with kindness, you will smell the fragrance of Prophet in your life. Because Allah made those roses reachable and accessible and this is the gift He gave to the nation. That's why he kept this system very clean. Look at the other nations, the minute their Prophet left another man came and changed the whole rules of the Prophet. That's the anti-Prophet, that's the false Prophet. The one who changed the words of a Prophet change the, the appetite, desires, the meals, the prayers, everything of that Prophet changed it means that there's no way to follow that towards any sainthood. If they follow that system that was changed from the way of the Prophet of Allah they reach to nothing. So Allah's great gift to the nation is their adherence to the prophetic way and the prophetic sunnah. As a result they will attain this love, this ishq and then they become Muhammadiyoon or they become the roses. As a result if you are kind to them the fragrance of Muhammadun Rasulullah begins to dress your home, your life, your family, everything around you and that you find yourself drawing very near to the presence of Prophet for whom treats his roses with kindness gains the nearness to his proximity. But if you come across one of his roses and you take it and, and destroy it, you can see yourself to be very far from the presence of Prophet by virtue of the character, the manners and the adab. So it's all self-evident, very easy to understand. When you treat that with love and respect that rose, you nourish it and take care of it then it begins to give its fragrance and its beatific reality which is what? Muhammadun Rasulullah And as a result of that fragrance that you smell from that reality, from that shaykh, that fragrance is drawing you in to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Then they continue to reach towards their nukht and to be nothing inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum Salaam Wa Rahmatullah In doing the practices and contemplation, if we feel more cool energy, is there a specific focus to heat up? And if we are too hot, is there a specific focus to cool down? Or is it better to be a conscious observer and let the energy balance itself? Or should we just yeah. strive for heat? Let the energy balance itself, don't focus on heat and hot and cold and you're losing the focus, that keep the focus with the shaykh, keep the focus with breathing, keep the focus in your muraqaba, you heat, you cool, it doesn't matter that let them overtake the energies that are needed and the movement of that energy. You make sure that the flow of energy is flowing, that whatever energy is coming in that you're also grounding. So this is a part of the same understanding of the nuh. Try your best to get out of the way. When you start to think, I should do, I will, I will change, like you're, you're thinking so much 
you lost the focus of the tafakkur in which you're dead. You meditate like you're dead, meditate like you're not there and that you want to be in their presence, you're breathing, doing your zikr, what energy comes to you what, or whatever experience is coming to you, like a dead body it just comes. Heating, cooling, whatever it is doesn't matter. Just stay out of the way of it so that you don't become distracted. Otherwise again shaitan can come and observe and then begin to play with the servant in which make them heated on one thing and then they start to focus on something else. So best to just be nothing and make the connection, keep within the heart and mind that I'm in the presence of the shaykh asking that these lights to dress me. Visualize yourself with these dresses and these lights making your zikr, doing your awrad, doing your breathing and drawing near into the ocean of power inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Should we be careful about whom we shake hands with also because of energy transferring? Yes yeah, sure, every, every type of energy you have to be careful. Make sure that you know you always have wudu so that your energy is sort of safeguarded. And I think nowadays they even ask people not to shake hands because of sicknesses and colds and flus and everybody cleaning their, their noses with their hands. So you, you can just give salams and, and uh, keep it at a distance. But definitely keep yourself always in wudu so that not to pick up and convey an energy to yourself that you don't have the ability to, to carry and to, to rid yourself of. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, since joining this way our understanding of love has completely changed. Now we feel empty knowing we haven't lived based on love. How can we learn about love and grow it? Follow the way inshaAllah. You can watch the videos, that's why there's the 2000 videos. You can search in the section and, and one specific on love and connection and muhabbat and bring oneself up to speed and, and revisit and revisit and revisit in a world that uh, is ever, ever more lacking in love. We have to continuously revisit and this is a love of the Divine and love of Sayyidina Muhammad and not the the love of being gullible. I think in one of the talks we described that, that don't be fooled by saying, oh I'm going to be loving therefore trusting, therefore opening myself to every type of dajjal. This love is very specific, this love is the love of Allah love of Sayyidina Muhammad and everyone else is with a grain of salt. So that's, that's the difference is that my love for Allah love for Prophet that's my focus. Everyone else I know that they have shaitans on them and I don't know what those shaitans are planning. So it's not about the kumbaya and I love everybody, no, no because we said 90% of the people that have shaitans in them now is trying to harm people. So the trust and faith is in only in Allah and His Rasul and those whom try their best to exhibit that love and that characteristic. Other than that then it's with a grain of salt because some people will hear that and say, I should be loving and kind to everyone, say, no, no, the teachings actually should, should be very careful and very cautious because you know these shaitans want to hurt people with this love. They want to find these soft and loving people and harm them and confuse them and abuse them. When you visit maqams and visit areas be very cautious that 90% of the people may be charlatans. You say, why? Well because shaitan came into paradise and fooled Eve. Hello? Means that she's sitting in paradise and somebody coming in whispering and, uh, and when they fell from grace they say, why? Why you did like that? So we never thought shaitan going to come to us in paradise. If he can come in paradise every maqam and every masjid has filled with these shaitans. They come to you, oh I see you're like you're meditating, oh I'm Shaykh Baba, I can see your light, I'm like this, I'm like that, oh be careful. 
Any real wali will never disclose themselves, never introduce themselves. So that's not how the system works. We don't sit in a masjid somewhere looking at people who meditate and go up to them, hi you know I'm, I'm Shaykh Baba, why you don't follow me, come to my website, come to… <laughs> they don't talk like that. So if there's hidden walis and awliya and maqams, you'll never know that. They're the ones meditating, contemplating, doing their zikr and leaving. So anywhere you go, be very weary of anyone who talks to you. Just say, alhamdulillah, thank you very much, thank you, bye-bye. You do your meditation, do your tafat, go to the muqam, make your du'as, get your what you needed to get and get out. You have a shaykh, you have everything, nobody's going to come to you to give you any secrets because even if they do, you're going to be tariq al-adab and against the adab of your shaykh and commit a zina at that time. So nobody has to convey anything to you, your shaykh will convey to you. So you go to a muqam. You make your du'as, you make your salah, you make your connection to the, the shaykh at the maqam, the, the soul of the, those whom are at that maqam and asking from the lights of Prophet to dress you. And that anyone coming up and playing this game, no. So they do the same thing in Kaaba. They come begging you, oh I just got in a traffic thing, I lost my bus, my car and I have lost all my wallet. Yes shaykh please, please make du'a for me. Uh, can you give me five thousand dollars? And you think, oh my god, the Kaaba, Allah sending this. Because these shaitans also understand that this is a soft person and trying to make you know difficulty for them and hardship for them. So, no, this is not a time for that. This is a time in which to be very sharp, very sort of accurate in your understanding, your love for Allah, love for Prophet, following the, the teachings of your shaykh. And the rest, be careful, be careful with a grain of salt in everything that you do, inshaAllah. If you want to give, then you find somebody and you give. Those who come to you, then they're professional and that can cause a difficulty. They follow you later and they, they, they take the rest of your wallet outside. So, everyone has to be very cautious in these times. And anyone that comes up to them, that's not only other, they don't come up to you and say, hey, you know who I am, I'm the, the baba of this area and say, no. They don't introduce themselves, there's no marketing like that, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Concerning the story of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani and Mulana Shah Naqshaband, how do we handle the high expectations? It's not so much that you expect high expectation that if you thought yourself high of yourself like, oh I must be reaching very high stations, the shaykhs will throw out these talks and these realities that, that to humble people that think they're progressing and think very highly of themselves of achieving and achieving and achieving. And then they're showing that in, in one example the shaykh is throwing him off a cliff, he pushed him. And think in your life how many times you've been pushed, not even over a cliff, just pushed to your limit in which you didn't want to do the service, you didn't like the advice, you didn't like the teaching, how much you complained, how much you got angry and then watch that all his shaykhs are watching you. And all those shaykhs in their diwan and in their associations they're all grading and saying, no way, no way, no way, no way, it doesn't meet any of our criteria. So people have to be aware of this world of light. If you think the shaykh is, is like a bozo, doesn't know anything, doesn't see anything, you, you, you have to imagine that he has 40 huge grand shaykhs that they're not and they, they have many gifts. So whatever interaction, those grand shaykhs are watching. So that comes from belief, all the grand shaykhs are watching, they watch every interaction. They're the ones giving the criteria that this one is passing or this one is not passing. And this one, well, we'll deal with them in the grave and we'll teach them in the grave, they're not going to make it on this world. So that's, that's the criteria they want to put out there that don't think you're like fooling a shaykh. There's 40 huge shaykhs behind that you're not fooling and they're Sayyidina Muhammad absolutely you're not you're fooling. And now is Sayyidina Mahdi salam zuhoor in this dunya, nobody's fooling. So when we have that consciousness, that's why Allah taqullah, have a taqwa. 
if you if you believe Allah is seeing and then Allah has given the angels they can see, Allah gave shaitan he can see, well of course then awliya and pious people they can see. They see the actions of people and then they begin to give the criteria, although those are sinful things they can make tawbah but these no, 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 no. These characteristics are not, not righteous characteristics, these behaviors are not. That's why they give the teaching is to humble people whom think they're maybe very high and they're reaching to areas and then to humble and say, that you haven't been tested like this and we, you'll be put in a difficulty and to see how you come out of this difficulty, you lose all hope in tariqah, you lose all hope in the shaykhs, you lose all hope in, in the Divinely Presence or you became stronger from it. <coughs> so there are continuous, continuous tests in life in which to see, are you keep going or you're giving up? If you're giving up then it's time to check out. If you're somebody who's not going to give up then you're going to keep coming, keep coming, keep coming and know they're going to keep testing you to see if you want to go. So it's not, it's not, it's not an easy path especially this because the reward is for eternity. The, re the reward is immense for all of eternity when they achieve these rewards. So that's a huge, huge gift. It's not for 10 years, 20 years or 30 years uh, and then you retire. It's for all of eternity to reach these goals and these stations and this nearness to Allah and the nearness to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why then khuluq, your character straight up forward and, and good with good and sincere mannerisms and then know that we'll be continuously tested. So that's, that's why they give those types of examples that and, and those were very, very you know tough, tough types of testing that they continuously tested the, the students to see how much you know they would persevere and how much patience they would have and that uh, that way their, their faith would go into such a deep crevice of their reality that that would determine the quality of, of their, their reality, that they're like diamonds, rubies, they're precious to Allah But if that coal, it, it only becomes a diamond under extreme heat. So it means you have to be cooked at a very high heat for your carbon element to become a diamond. Diamonds are not made easily. Now they make them artificially but under intense pressure and heat. Well Allah is then saying, I want diamonds not coal, not charcoal. Charcoal you burn them, you use them to make fire. So he'll have you know things that have been made to make fire but when he wants is a diamond, rubies, gems, emeralds, those require a lot of heat and pressure, heat and pressure. So that's, that's what brings out rijal is that uh, they're continuously under testing, inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Subhanallah Sayyidi, you taught us Prophet says he was a Rasul before Adam was between clay and water and he is the khatam of Rasul, was it Prophet that Bible refers to as Alpha and Omega? I would imagine so. That Allah is, is not within creation. So any, anyone in the way of marifa, that high and the attribute of all living, it's all living is only valid because of death. What does all living mean if there's no death? If nobody had death this attribute of eternal living means makes no sense to you because it's just eternal. The attribute of al-hai has to match al mai the one who dies and the one who's granted eternal life. Allah's not within that. So Allah's not within these attributes of creation. Allah's not been born and Allah doesn't pass away suffer, we don't have any understanding of that reality of Allah So these attributes are in creation. Creation lives and dies 
and then Allah grants certain of it eternity, that's a reward and a gift. So, awwala khalqillah wa khatim al nabin is Prophet title. I am the first of creation because it created by Nur Muhammad wa khatim and I am the last of the Prophets. That's important because the Dajjal system will come and say, I'm a Prophet. You broke the relationship of Islam, you've left Islam and that's why false have already come. Qadiani came and said he's a Prophet, Baha'i came he said he's a Prophet. They cut their relationship with Islam, they cut from the relationship of Sayyidina Muhammad So that's why Prophet gave to us that, I am the Khatim, don't ever lose that. There's no one going to come and say they're Prophet, throw rock at them, they're not and have nothing to do with them. So people who say, oh he talks so nice about Allah, let's follow him. No, he's going to take you and cut you from Islam because he's going to claim himself a Prophet of Allah And that's why Prophet safeguarded us with this reality. And that's why when we describe they have the Lord's Prayer, O my Father who art in heaven. They understood that they didn't want Sayyidina Isa to be related to Sayyidina Muhammad so they say, he's talking about Allah. Mustafirul, why would Prophet, a Prophet ever say they're the son of God Almighty and then humanize, anthropomorphize God in, in human form? No, but they knew that prayer and they knew the relationship of Sayyidina Isa is related to Prophet Muhammad and they have in the Torah Muhammadan and they have the name of Sayyidina Muhammad So these are what we call kufr. Kufr is to know something and hide it, not to be ignorant, I ignorant person means they don't know anything. Kufr is to say, I know there's a relationship, well, let's hide it. And let's say that he was talking about Allah, well then they made a big deceit. They made uh, the Creator to have children and that's a, you know that shakes the throne when somebody talks like that. The Creator can be known through His creation like what we describe of Prophet that Allah wants to be known through His creation. Allah doesn't give birth. This is a very low characteristic for humanity but the Creator is free from birth, free from His creation and He merely wishes it and it appears. So that's th those references are to Sayyidina Muhammad And the book of Revelation, the book that they tell people not to read is the book that describes Prophet that John came to the emerald throne, well why are we all in green, why is the green dome of Medina is an emerald. And he says, I saw upon the, the throne a king and it was not God, a king and seated next to the king the lamb which is Sayyidina Isa <coughs> So they have all these truths, they have all these realities. But they hide it because of a Dajjal system. So these realities are known. And that's why when we go to Medina to Munawwara that the maqam of Sayyidina Isa is in the Rawdah Sharif. Every day when people are passing and giving salams, the maqam of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and Sayyidina Umar Farooq, Sayyidina yeah, Umar Farooq and Sayyidina Isa. Sayyidina Uthman Qani Jami al Qur'an al Majeed is in Jannatul al Baqi. But from these two holy companions and the maqam, the burial location of Sayyidina Isa is right next to Sayyidina Muhammad and Rawd al Sharif. So means his soul must be there at all times. And every salat and salams that we're passing by in Medina to Munawwara because the world of light has no time. Their lights are sitting and standing right there 
dressing everyone who comes to visit them. So this is an immense station Allah gave. Didn't say that we don't know where Sayyidina Isa is. No, Prophet described, he is right there next to me and Rosa Sharif and that there's a space for his body to be put in there for his second appearance. So then who has a love for Sayyidina Isa salam as the real Sayyidina Isa, Prophet of Allah It's the nation of Muhammadun Rasulullah Not a people who took a Prophet and named him God and got him to be cursed by God. So that's not something, that's not the, that one whom claims like that is a cursed one. Because Allah cursing the one who says that they're the son of the Creator. But the Sayyidina Isa who was a son of Sayyidina Maryam salam, that's the one whom is under the nation of Muhammadun Rasulullah and his love and reverence is under the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. If we know that digital currency, smart contracts and so forth is Dajjal, do we refuse work and that increasingly requires us to use and help build it? No, do you think by gaining knowledge you, you can't touch things? And that ignorance is bliss? No, they want you so that you understand. If I tell you the pan that you're cooking in the kitchen is hot, that doesn't mean don't go to the kitchen anymore. So that means that while you're in the kitchen be very cautious. That's a system that's been put into place to control people. So alhamdulillah that's why we're all on the internet. Do you think we were going to abandon, abandon the internet so that shaitan could destroy people? No, we're going to be very much present, wherever he's stepping we're all going to be stepping to counter whatever they're trying to do, their currencies, their things and these are just ilm and knowledges that yes, okay be aware of that, that they have a system in place. We said before the importance of last night we said, Ya Musabbibul Asbab, Mufatiha Abwaab, shaitan used that, that same system that he has to create a condition for you to enter a door. Right? So in your life he wants you to go to that door in the back of the room and escape and run from that. If you're just sitting in the room how is he going to do that? Uh, he knows the easiest way is I'll lock the other two doors and I'll put a fire in this room. You'll have no choice but to run through that door. So that's the system he understood from Allah and Allah gives that system by free will that I'll create a condition for my servants. If they meditate and contemplate, they should choose, they should choose the correct door. So that's why Ya Musabbibul Asbab that every condition Allah puts me in, He's, he's wanting me to make a choice towards the correct door. So that's you know the haqqaiq, so when the shaykhs come and talk haqqaiqs it doesn't mean now lock yourself in a closet and you can't eat, drink, sleep, you can't touch anything but giving you knowledge, knowledge is power. When you understand that that's a dajjal system that they're going to collapse this system, they're going to put out this system, it's going to be based on contracts, it's going to be locked, it's going to be it's sort of uh, tracking everything, so understand that. You think you're going to get out of that system? Is there any way you're going to run to, to be free from that? No, absolutely not. Unless you get your goat and go to the mountain and milk it and drink and that's, that's all you have is your goat. That day may come but for right now it's not the goat time. Now it's just the knowledge of their systems and what they're putting into place because the reverse was, oh these are going to go through the roof, you don't know these are going to be like amazing, this is going to go to this, this is going to go to that. So not from all what we understand that they're, they're, they're going to make these things collapse and push people into a direction and the people will ask for that direction, right? So they had a, everybody dying, everybody sick until people said, please, please help us. Oh, you want to take this thing? Say, yeah, please, please, we, 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 we don't want to die. No, you want to take this? Okay, line up and take it. 
And they lined up to take it, to take it. Then they said, I want one, can I have two please, can I have three? And thinking that's going to save them and keep them alive. So he created the fire so that they would run towards the choice. So that's all it is, is teaching the awareness. So when we see that type of fire, no you don't have to run to that choice, we have to run to Allah. Ya Rabbi protect us from this, this fire they're putting, that you are my provider, you are my saviour, you are the one whom will protect me. So alhamdulillah, it then become challenge to everyone's faith and keep believing, Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu, Amanu, oh you who believe Allah is going to test it and here we go even higher belief, higher belief, higher belief inshaAllah so that it's never ending. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam uh, Could you please elaborate about the first 40 nights of the grave and making intention of having our worldly spiritual practices be included for that time? No, with al arbaeen, with al itakaf, the dakhal wa suluq wa siyam fi hadil majlis ya Rabbil Arsh al Azeem. We take from that 40 days of khalwa that we're supposed to be doing, we can attribute that in a way to that make I'm making intention to take from that time of my 40 days that I owe Allah throughout my worshipness. So for 30 years we've been reciting that. From the beginning we begin our ibadah with Salat al-Maghrib all the way to the finishing of this zikr, we're in that time. So those two, three hours were taken away from 40 days. So imagine then how much of that was taken away from 40 days after 20 years of, 30 years of reciting that. That's one reduction is to make intention that every time we start ibadah and worshipness that Allah take it as a time in my khalwa. Then the meditation is the most powerful, that will be the first stages of meditation once you've learned to make the connection and begin to make that connection. The, the difficulties of the grave will begin to open and that's why people say, I'm, I'm connecting, I feel an energy, I feel this difficulty, I feel this heat, I feel these, these bugs, I see a dog and it's attacking, it's barking at me, yelling and about to eat me. Yeah that's the azab of the grave because these are the bad characteristics that Allah make them to manifest in front of us. Don't focus on it, do your zikr, do your breathing, it come all the way up to you maybe even begin to try to bite you and begin to play with your senses and again you make your connection, connect to the shaykh, make your zikr, make your, your breathing. If you truly had a taqwa and fear of the grave you, you would be meditating like crazy because of the immensity of the intensity and the sadness and the difficulty of the grave. So that, that has an immense importance. So then when you meditate and especially when Ramadan begins then that's a, a great opening that, Ya Rabbi let this to be my time in the grave and that the blessings of Ramadan to make it to be more peaceful. The first 10 days of rahmah then you begin to enter to the grave and begin to do the zikrs, the meditation, every day meditating while you're fasting that uh, my grave and the, the difficulties of my grave and all my bad characteristics to come out and let your rahmah to, to wash them and clean them and I make istighfar. And through those 30 days until you get itku min an nar then that Ya Rabbi then take the fire of my grave that whatever portion I had of jahannam and punishment that in this Ramadan itku min an nar save me from fire. So Ramadan is a great 30 days of intense sort of muraqabah towards the 40 days of the grave. So it's almost a time of seclusion because of the intensity of the gift of fasting, it can reduce the hardships. So when shaykhs are ordered into khalwa, they're ordered usually near the maqams of shaykhs so that it can be lessened the intensity. Someone just doing it at home may have a, a very difficult time. So many times they're ordered near a maqam so that the soul arwa of those shaykhs will lessen the intensity and the difficulty upon the servant inshaAllah. But Ramadan is a great time to experience that and open those, those 30 days and all the way to the last 10 days in which they can visualize the fire of their grave and then asking for the intercession of Prophet to come and to make their qabr 
to be a cool and peaceful filled with the light and the, the rahmah the rain of mercy from Allah's presence which is the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ila Shaykh al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa sallam wa alayhi wa ashabi kiram wa alayhim shaykhina fi tariqat al Nashbandiyyat al Aliyya khasatan Shah Nashband Muhammad al Waisi al Bukhari sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Shaykh al Faiz Dagestani sallam Shaykh Muhammad Nazim al Adil Haqqani. Mawlana al Shaykh al Shaykh al Kabani, Shaykh al Nabi Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad al Adil, Mawlana al Khaliq al Khajj al Sahib zaman Sayyid Muhammad al Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyifullah Sayyidina alayhi salam. Thumma Sayyidina Bakr Sadiq, Sayyidina Ummah, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hassan a.s. Imam al-Husayn a.s. Sayyidatina Fatima Tazari a.s. Wa Sayyidu Sadatina Siddiqeen al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.